All right, I want to address something about homosexuality. So <clears throat> everybody's a little on both sides, a little bit um, off, you know? You got hardcore religious people saying, you know, it's a sin, you're going to go to hell, blah, 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 blah. Then you got the other people being like, love is love, you know? Okay, now here's where they're both a little wrong. So, the religious people aren't entirely incorrect. You will not see the kingdom of God if you're a homosexual. Let me explain. The kingdom of God is the oneness with God, the, the, the unity back with God, you know? And it's like, you have, we have to understand this from, a different, from an Eastern perspective, because a lot of this is what Yeshua was speaking, that that the Bible doesn't exactly tell you, like reincarnation and all this stuff, right? Which is not demonic to any people that think that. It's energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred, and our souls are a form of energy, right? A little sparks of the, the massive source, which is God, right? So, homosexuality is not this evil deed that you're going to burn in a fiery pit for. I don't believe that for one second. But you won't become liberated if you're homosexual. Let me explain. Homosexuality only happens from trauma, you know, whether it's in this life or it could even be in a past life, you know. It could either come from some type of traumatic experience happening to where you then resent the other gender, you know, like, if you're a, a girl and, you know, your creepy-ass uncle rapes you or something like that, then you grow up having a fear for men, and then, you know, you still get hormones and all this stuff, and then you end up just being attracted to females. And then that's just, that. that's one way it can happen, and then it could also happen where, in a past life, let's say you were a, a male, and you were just so lustful, unbelievably lustful, and so... Ugh, for the female form, and this could happen for the, either or of the genders. Like you could be a male in this too, and this or a female in this happen to be a male. But I'll explain. So, let's say you were just so lustful, and you just, ugh, I want to come back again to just experience this female form. But you're like so infatuated with it, and this isn't every time. But it, of course, it can happen to where then you're a female in this life, but you still have that craving for the female form point is it's a bunch of chaos that needs to get sorted out you can't become liberated from the the traumas and the problems of this world you know you can't be liberated when you still have that stuff going on in your consciousness you know you can't like in all the religions we'll talk christianity yeshua says like you know to not be in the ways of this world and a lot of different buddhism hinduism all kinds of things say the same thing not to be like materialistic not to be stuck in in the, the the flesh's desires and passions and all that or you're gonna come back not because you're a terrible person but because god is so holy god is so pure you like you can't return to that source if you don't match that purity you know it just it just doesn't work you know it doesn't work so you have to, to sort out your, your karma. You got to sort out your stuff before you can naturally go back to God. That doesn't mean God doesn't love you. God loves everybody, everything, all the sinners. God loves every, every, everything in existence. God loves. But it's all on its own path until it gets there, right? But, so I will say, if you're homosexual, no, you probably, unless you sort it out and no longer have that craving you probably won't become liberated. You won't go to heaven. You won't become enlightened. You won't reach nirvana. Whichever, however you want to see it, that probably won't happen until you come down to the root cause. And sometimes this could be really tricky because it could be from a past life. And then you really got to gotta sort it out. Like, that doesn't mean you have to memorize, like, what exact experience from, like, some past life regression thing. That's not what I'm saying. But you have to find it within yourself in the, in the present, in the here and now, 
why you feel that way and you have to actively seek to to separate yourself from that that sin you i mean it's like if you have that craving you have to understand that whether you're straight whether you're gay it doesn't matter when you have that craving it ultimately stems from lust and this is where i do like in christianity the seven deadly sins it's like those the seven deadly sins are a perfect like map to show you like if you're doing these seven like types of behaviors you're not getting liberated you're gonna have a horrible existence and you're not gonna see the kingdom of god you're not going to be enlightened if you're doing these things you have to transcend these lower animal behaviors before you can be open to that purity right so you gotta ultimately when it comes to to homosexuality or if you just are extremely lustful or extremely horny as a as a straight person it comes down to lust being a fucking person that is just so obsessed with sex whether what even if you're straight is just as bad so it's not like it's not like it's that much different if you're lustful it doesn't really matter lust is the issue right so you have to come down to that you have to transcend lust and you can do that through many ways but ultimately, you need God's grace. You need to tap into that purity. You need to tap into that and it'll ha and have that guide you, you know? Christians call it the Holy Spirit. You know, you have to have that guide you, you know, into this purity and away from these things, you know? So, yeah, at the end of the day, nobody's bad. And I don't think like, there are Christians. There are definitely Christians that feel like they're on a high horse, that they feel like they're, they can be hateful because of this like god says it so it's kind of a loophole like maybe they don't want to admit that to themselves but <clears throat> and i'm not saying that's all that is not all there are genuinely some some religious people that feel like you know i want to help these people i want them to come to god i want them to realize i don't want them to feel this trauma and that's kind of what i'm saying too but at the end of the day you have to come to this you know we can plant seeds in these people but it's all in God's timing. If it's meant to happen in, at that time, it will happen, you know? You can be a vessel that that gives them that seed of truth, no matter what religion you come from. You can uh, give someone who's homosexual a seed and maybe it'll fruit. And if it did, it wasn't you who did it, it was God's timing and you were just the, the vessel which did that, but it was God ultimately, you know? But nobody is bad people, but at the end of the day, when the homosexual like community says love is love it's like it's on paper that sounds nice you know but the reality <clears throat> the reality is it's not love though you know they it's kind of coping it's a coping mechanism for their trauma they're they're burying their trauma and this could be like i said this could go deep from lives before or it can be from this life this life but it's so subconscious that they don't they hated those experiences a lot of people that they that they've grown up trying to like suppress that so much that like they're not even aware and that's like where it's really hard like if they're not even aware how the hell are you going to show them like maybe you could spark something that that in the depths of their consciousness like eyes open like oh my god you know but at the end of the day it's god's grace and when it's meant to happen it will happen you know so everybody has a pure soul but not everybody will become enlightened we have to do the work we have to find we have to seek god ourselves and focus speak the truth you could speak the truth no matter what religion speak speak of god that's fine but know that it's ultimately god's grace when these things happen so nobody at the, their core is evil they're just lost corrupted people that yes in a perfect world i wish that they would all come to the light give up these sinful behaviors and be happy but the reality is like the reality is it's not gonna happen for everybody in this time period now we are at a pivotal pivotal shift you know in this time period like 
could say in the Bible, there's like revelations or, you know, if you go with the more new age stuff, it's like the shift to 5D or whatever. However you want to word it, it's really the same thing. That, that's that's another thing I want to talk about um, in a maybe in a different video about uh, like some Christians are saying like new age stuff is uh, is demonic and all this stuff and problem you know I'll get into it now you know the problem with new age as a whole I would say as a whole new age is way too vague to be truth okay because what new age pretty much is is we really don't know so we're just kind of like do everything so we'll get it eventually i mean something's got to be right let's throw a little bit of uh astrology let's pray to some crystals let's fucking uh you know do some witchcraft and then we'll pray to god like now see there is a lot of like this is why new age is a slippery slope and i i wouldn't say it's truth because a lot of that stuff like witchcraft and all that like christianity is absolutely correct about like witchcraft and stuff like that like if you're if you're like the source of your blessings aren't coming from god they're not blessings there's a catch there's a small the small print you didn't read right so i i don't i don't fuck with any of that witchcraft stuff i don't feel like you need to to have luck charms i don't feel like you need to to do all this stuff you know but that being said to say things like the ascended masters like i've heard people say that like that like the ascended masters and all that's demonic no that's not demonic now when it comes to channeling that's a very slippery slope because you really are opening yourself and it's like if you aren't super pure it's like if you aren't super pure that's a very dangerous thing to do and if you're if you are super pure you're just gonna get god speaking through you you don't really need some alien being to tell you something right i'm not saying that there aren't positive forces out in the universe but that being said god is the the most reliable source so just worry about that and that is where christianity is right like when you got the holy spirit in you that's really all you need right you don't need some pleiadian to tell you this stuff i'm not saying that there aren't positive channelings that you can get but there are a lot of uh like the bible says that like the devil will pose as an angel of light like you don't really know what you're getting into so you you need to tread lightly with that stuff and that's why i can understand where that is could be seen as demonic because in a lot of cases it is but that doesn't mean it always is but i would steer clear of the channeling stuff just worry about god right but as far as the law of attraction goes, I've heard Christians say that the law of attraction is demonic and all this stuff, not realizing that that is, the law of attraction is really just a fancy way to map out what, what, what prayer is, honestly. Like, Yeshua says, you know, when you pray, believe you've already received it and it will be yours. He's basically just telling you how to, to, how to think when you're going into prayer. You can call it the law of attraction. You could like say some fancy thing, but all you're really doing is praying to God. You are just having faith, your trust. It's all it is. It's having faith in your prayer, you know? You can be like, I'm I'm going to go into my calling and have like a business or whatever. And then you visualize that. And when you're visualizing that, that's not some demonic thing. As long as you're tapped in to to god and you're not like willingly going to these dark forces and you you are actually praying to god for this you are trusting god's ability because god can do all things you're trusting that and then you're just picturing you're giving because god has tapped into your consciousness right he he can visually youth picturing it is really just a prayer in itself being unbelievably specific on what you want and God sees that and you're having faith and then you're doing your part and God's doing God's part and you know and the two meet in the middle and it happens you know that's all the law of attraction is it's nothing woo woo that is like thing or whatever now that being said I think a lot of people don't fully understand the law of attraction and sure they can go about it in some witchcraft type way where they're praying to spirits to give them things like you just have to you just have to know God like there's a there's a bible verse that says like you know seek the kingdom of god above all things and then 
all these things will be added to you. It's kind of like that, you know? God will provide you all these things, you know? Don't be like just wanting something. Want God above all, right? And then all of all of these things, if it's truly meant for you and it will truly uplift the planet, uplift yourself and glorify God, all all of what you want will will flourish, you know? And if if it's not in your highest interest and the highest interest of the planet, it's rooted in sin and darkness somewhere along the line. But if it is truly your like divine calling, God's gonna provide for you. Because it's written, you know, in in God, you know, that, that this is this is what's gonna happen for you, you know? And see I have my life calling. I'm not gonna reveal too much about it just yet. It's kinda kind of a thing I got interpersonal thing right now but it's kind of what I'm doing like I want there's a certain calling I have that will really get me the influence I need to, to help humanity but at the same time like yes I will gain things materially from it but like the reason for it is for the betterment of this planet and for humanity and God you know to glorify God so as long as like your calling is rooted in in the highest good it will happen and you just have to have faith in your prayer you can call it the law of attraction if you want but honestly when you see it as what it is it just having faith in your prayer when you realize that then you just call it something else it's kind of avoidance of god like you can call god like here's what i do when i'm talking to someone who's more like new agey i'll say the universe this the universe that when really i'm meaning god and I used to start off saying the universe too. But why did I why did I say the universe? It's really because I wasn't super confident in understanding of God, you know? And it's like the universe, you yes, the universe and God are are one like, you know, both terms or whatever, but there's more power in the name of God than the universe. The universe is kind of just like a way to like to not give respect to the name of God. You can say it, like it means the same thing, but when you know the power of God, it's like God with a capital G, you know what I mean? Like, you have to, I mean, you, you wanna glorify that, that that light, you know? And when you say universe, it's a little vague. Like, when, when it comes to all of this stuff, being specific to your own consciousness is very important, you know? So. When, like, when someone is, like, kind of dabbling in the New Age stuff and they'll say, like, the universe this, the universe that, yeah, I'll, I'll play that game with them, you know, to to get them to the, to the high point. I'll play that game with them. But at the end of the day, it's, it's God. And as they rise up and they truly feel that light, when you feel that light, you're going to want to say God over the universe. So, or Allah, or whatever, whatever, like culture you stream from there is one truth you know there is one truth and it is the truth that yeshua spoke of you know like when you say like the body of christ that is oneness like christ is the state that yeshua was in right and that if you say that like christ is the only way to god you could say that that state that oneness that is the only way because if you're still in duality you're not going to get to that that truth you know so you have to to get to that christ consciousness and there are christians who say that's demonic too which is insane because all christ consciousness is is basically what would jesus do you know they say that all the time what would jesus do well you'd have to have christ consciousness to know what jesus would do i mean you could pick would you would, would you rather be like jesus yeshua or would you rather be in the sinful ways of the world? I mean, I would hope if you're a true practicing Christian, you're gonna naturally have Christ consciousness. Like, that's that's what I mean. Like, you can't. You have to be in touch with God more so than listen to other people's testimonies. Like, not saying that there's not truth in them, because of course God touches everybody for into where they're uniquely at on their own path. You know, in whichever avenue they want to reach him. But as long as you're seeking God, that that's what matters. You know, so covered a lot in this video, but stuff that's been boiling in my head for a minute. So 
hopefully someone will benefit from this. So, have a good day.